This is the all new Lexus RX. It's the company's flagship model in Europe and it's going to come primarily in this 450 H plus guys, which is a plug-in hybrid. It'll have 309 horsepower and up to 65 kilometers or thereabouts of electric only driving range. It's got a lot of equipment and quite a lot of safety features, which we'll come back to in a moment. But first of all, we want to talk about the design. Around the front, it has an all new look, similar to what we've seen in the NX and what's coming with the RZ fully electric SUV. It's got slender headlights and it's got a wider track, 15 millimeters wider. Central gravity has also come down by 15 millimeters as well to improve handling. But the overall size doesn't really change. It's the same length as before, but thanks to its new platform, the wheelbase has grown by 60 millimeters. That means there's more room in the front and in the back. In Ireland, there'll be two specification grades, luxury and premium. But really, regardless of which one you choose, you get an awful lot of equipment. That includes 21 inch alloy wheels as standard. And inside there's a ton of really nice gear, which we'll talk about in a moment. There's a lot of interesting and techy features like these door handles, which are, you know, pull them out, just press the button and it automatically electrically opens the door. Very smart and it's very nice to use. But the design overall is, well, it's softer than before. We've had Lexus cars that have really been defined by sharp creases, taut lines, and it's kind of softened up. You see it the way it rises up here and how this all comes back. It's similar to the previous generation. It's just evolved a little bit more. Around the rear, you've got a light bar that goes all the way across and the Lexus name is now spelled out. There's no more L badge. And this is a trend that we see across the industry from a lot of different brands. The boot is electrically operated as standard and inside there's no reduction in boot space because Lexus designed this to be a plug-in hybrid from the outset. So there's no compromise when it comes to how much boot space you have. You can also drop the rear seats down electrically via these buttons on the back, just adds to the sense of convenience. When it comes to interiors, Lexus has a very solid reputation and it's no different inside this model. The fit and finish of everything is absolutely top-notch, properly premium quality everywhere you look, from the stitching to this soft material on the doors and the seats. Incredibly comfortable, adjustable electrically in every possible way, as is the steering wheel as well. So you can adjust this up or down to find your ideal driving position. The layout of this is pretty much the same as what we've seen in the NX. So you have this really large central touchscreen display. It's nicely positioned. It's got everything you'd want in it. You can have your Apple CarPlay, your Android Auto in there. You've got a partly digital instrument display in front of you. Again, all the essentials are there and a very good high definition head up display as well. That's all adjustable via these touch pads on the steering wheel and normally I don't really like touch pads, but it actually works pretty well on this because as you're going through, rather than having a festoon of buttons, as you touch them, it will present to you in the head-up display exactly what it's doing. So you're not having to look down, you're not having to take your eyes off the road. Speaking of your eyes, there's also a driver facing camera system here. You can't really see it, it's behind this infrared panel, but that keeps an eye on what you're doing. So it's making sure you're not looking down at your phone or distracted, or maybe if you've had a medical incident, for example, it can detect what you're doing. It will give you an alert if it detects that, hey, you're not looking at the road. If there's more of an issue, more something more serious, it can even stop the car and alert the emergency services. So that's good to know that it does have a lot of safety features. The interior layout in the center console then, you've got, well, two big cup holders, you've got USB-C charge ports here, you've got a wireless charging pad in here, more USB-C and a charge ports and a 12 volt socket. You can get everything topped up and charging here. There's even more in the back, but it's all just so nicely put together in here. That's really the thing that sets this apart from some of the other premium models, the quality and the finish. It's very nicely thought out, it's very well laid out, and it just looks the part. In the rear, there's loads of space, and this is where the difference between this and the slightly smaller NX comes into play. That stretch I mentioned of 60 millimeters in the wheelbase means I have more leg room in here. For reference, I'm five foot nine, and I'm sitting behind the driving seat as I would be sitting in the driving seat, so I've 
I can just about touch the seat in front. I have a lot of room here. Headroom is very, very good as well, thanks to the way they've shaped the interior. And it's just very comfortable to sit here. The seats are nice and wide. They come out far enough. I've got a good bit of support under my leg. Even the middle seat is actually fairly wide. So anyone sitting in the middle, they're not gonna feel like they've gotten the short straw. There's ventilation in the back here. You can even change the position of the front passenger seat by this button on the side. Very useful if you're already sitting in the back. You've got USB-C charge ports here. In this particular version, I've got heated and cooled rear seats and even a 220 volt power outlet. So there's no reason why you can't be back here either as kids enjoying having all your devices or as a mobile office. It's got everything. Every time you begin your journey in the Orex, it starts in its fully electric mode. Now you can, at the touch of a button, choose to have it drive in purely electric mode, and it will do that most of the time, but you can also save the battery level if you need it for further along in your journey. Say you're driving into a city that has a zero emission zone, it means that you can ha always have enough battery charge there. Speaking of the battery, once that is fully charged, you're going to have around 65 kilometers of pure EV driving. Now that's slightly less than what you get in the NX, even though they share the same powertrain, it's mainly just due to the difference in weight between the vehicles. Impressively, you can drive at motorway speeds in pure electric mode, and in that EV mode, it is very, very quiet. There's very little in the way of road noise, even though it's got 21 inch wheels. Even when you do want to have a bit of fun on some of the twisty roads, it can stay in fully electric mode and give you all that torque right away. Even though this is a big car and it does have a bit of weight, it does hold its line quite well. There's a nice degree of feedback from the steering, which I like. It gives me a better idea of what the front end is doing. Out of electric mode, the petrol engine comes on stream very, very smoothly. It's very quiet in its operation, so long as you're not trying to wring every bit of horsepower from it. And the latest transmission is much more enjoyable to use than previous CVT version. So it does feel more like a traditional automatic in that sense. In that hybrid mode, well, it's still every bit as smooth and refined. And if you're only driving on part throttle in most cases in traffic, you'll barely be able to notice the difference between whether you're using the electric motor or you're using the petrol engine. And the ride quality is so comfortable. This is not a car that tries to be very, very sporty. It doesn't have firm suspension to give you an idea of it being more dynamic. This car is all about comfort and it's all the better for it. If you're considering something like an X5 M Sport, it's gonna be very different to this car. But that's where the Lexus shines true. It is all about the finer things, quality, comfort, enjoyment. It's such a relaxing car to drive as well. That's the one thing. You can do two, three hours in this car and you'll get out feeling like you've just driven down to the shops. And it's that comfort, refinement and, well, luxury that sets this apart from the usual German rivals that it's going to be pitched against. It is very, very different in many aspects. And that's the kind of thing that is probably going to appeal if you're interested in this car. That fact that this isn't one of the usual German brands, it's a little bit different. And it's that quality of the materials inside, how it's all put together. It really is impressive. So that's our first drive review of this new Lexus ORX plug-in hybrid. It really just oozes quality. It's so refined on the move. It's got a useful electric driving range as well, which means you can pretty much do your average Monday to Friday in and out of work commute without really ever having to touch the petrol engines. That's really good news for people as well. It is really a proper alternative to some of the more established German cars as well. If you're looking for something different, this is definitely one to consider. If you wanna know more about this car or any of those rivals, head to our website. It's completecar.ie. You'll find it linked in the description below. And it's a great resource for finding your next new car. In the meantime, we'd love to know more about what you think about this car, so do get involved in the comments below and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.